Happy Monday. Welcome to the lab. I'm Seth, and I'm here with Cal and Cody. And today, uh, we're going to be chatting and you're going to be listening as per usual. So, uh, gentlemen, how are you today? Excellent. Uh, yeah, I'm just peachy. <laughs> <laughs> we're all struggling just like, yeah, we, uh, we have the sunday scaries i think <laughs> i definitely do yeah, yeah. Uh, but how how has everybody's weekend been or week <laughs> do you want the truth or do you want lies we like, we like always the truth always the truth <laughs> No one has anything? Come on. Oh, <laughs> really? yeah, you go first. Uh, I don't remember. Well, it wasn't great, but, you know, we're going to keep going. I mean, as far as, like, training and stuff, it was a great week. But uh, personal level and work and stuff, meh, not my favorite. But, like I said, soldier on. You know? <laughs> How about you, Cody? Um, you know, I would say... Uh, workouts were still good i think it's just this this thing i don't know it's like the universe that just keeps throwing little like hurdles at me and like i think i, I swear me and Diaz at the start of every week are like cool at least it's a new week you know it won't we won't have any like weird things happening no like random hospital trips or whatever and then like something happens and then it's just thrown off off again and then it's like the struggle to get back on track and it's just this whole month i feel like that's what it's been like so at one point we will find our footing maybe we won't until may but yeah how about, how about that, you kill? it's not that far from now at least and i think you might yeah. be jinxing yourself every monday <laughs> yeah stop having that's any true. expectations yeah i mean <laughs> I actually do like Mondays are one of my favorite days of the week. I don't know if it's because I kind of excel in chaos or if uh, I'm just already really tired from the weekend because the weekends are actually more my busiest days. So Mondays, I just feel like have more purpose and Sundays I are my rest day from the gym. So it just feels all weird and off. So Monday I'm like, cool. I had to work out. You know, it's basically a normal schedule. Yeah, it's a lot of hustle, but um, I feel good at the end of the day where weekends, I don't really feel that as much. So, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I uh, I went out to a camping um, like midweek, Tuesday through Thursday, because Maddie is unemployed currently, and I have a job where I can leave <laughs> in the middle sometimes. So, um yeah, so we went out, and, it, and my week has been so screwy since. I cannot remember what day it is. I can't remember what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I've been all thrown off, but I think I'm finally back on track. So that feels good. <laughs> That's good. I mean, how was the, the cabin experience? Did you get to relax a little bit? or uh, A little like, bit. No. <laughs> a little bit. Um, it was pretty nice. Um, the only thing, it was like a weird Airbnb. This is going to be a complete tangent, by the way. Um, so I'm just going to tell you the whole thing. Uh, so it was a little bit weird. So it was in very rural Kentucky, which is fine. That's what we were going for was rural, like kind of secluded. and um, But it was in like a family holler is what I would uh, describe it as because it was like nothing for miles and then four houses on the same property as us. And they were in like only one Airbnb. And so there was a horse, which was very pretty, but it was a free roaming horse. Um, so it just would walk around <laughs> and like be in your front yard or every morning it would walk to the neighbors and I was like, the fuck is it and there's no fences or anything and then every day they would drive a side by side from one house to the other house to get like eggs and stuff um but five australian shepherds were with them and like following the side by side um and barking so it always like set off a chaotic chain of events with our dogs of course um so it was just strange. Um, it was real weird. That sounds like a very odd Airbnb experience. <laughs> it was <so> relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lot of dog barking at all times because they were very much like 
farm dogs, like outside dogs. Um, so yeah, but Betty got to go swimming, and that's her favorite thing to do. So Yay. that's good. I'm sure they probably like to try to chase the horse or like just. She did eat a lot of horse shit. Yeah. Oh, that's yummy. Not surprised. <laughs> right. Did she roll in wow. it too? No, she's not. She likes to roll in just regular dirt, but eat the poop. Oh, a, a connoisseur of finer things. Mm-hmm. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Uh, so that was my week that was my uh very exciting relaxing getaway that i feel so recharged from (laughs) but that's what we get because i think it was like a 46 dollars a night or something it was so cheap we're like this is why this is why but then they're probably like no one ever rents our airbnb and you were like the first people to do it and there is like no they had a guest (laughs) book They okay. had a guest book. Maddie Paul. did re- writing a skating review. Oh, <laughs> we gotta they get out of the guest like, house. They probably signed it all themselves. They just made up like fifty different names. <laughs> they just passed it around at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Fill up our guest book. John Smith. <laughs> Grandpa had to sit on sleep on the floor because of you. <laughs> Jesus. But... Dollars. <sighs> that was wow. that was our very relaxing vacation. <sighs> wow! Yeah. Should we talk about? Uh, oh yeah, we, we didn't we didn't announce the the actual topic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we are going to talk about fitness technology slash like wearables, just you know scales with body fat measurement shit on it. Uh, you know all the, of the new things that are becoming available to us to track our fitness levels. So yeah, basically, are they useful? Should you spend the money on them? Or is it a waste of money? Is it accurate? Is there any use to these things? That's (laughs) kind of what I was hoping to touch on. (laughs) Love it. Love it. So do you all wear Apple watches, right? Yep. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) mine is old as hell though i will say that i think it's a like a the second generation it's very old (laughs) it does what it's supposed to do i'm guessing so yeah i uh i don't know do you guys like it do you find them useful i do i didn't used to have one yeah, I didn't used to have one, didn't used to wear one. I just used my phone to like track my steps and shit. But then I was gifted this, and now I don't know how I ever lived without it. I mean, you know, it's not that hard, but it's very useful. I think it's much more accurate for step tracking and stuff like that because you don't have to remember. If you go to the bathroom, you're like, oh, let me, you know, grab my phone or let me just make sure. You need it I anyway. always have my phone. That's true. I do grab it because. <laughs> What else am I going to do? (laughs) Reading material is very necessary. But uh, yeah, I love it. How about you guys? Um, You bullied me into getting one. So (laughs) uh, I had kind of gotten away from it. I was wearing a G-Shock pretty normally or something to that effect. And uh, you were like, I need to be able to see that you're getting to step in, bitch. So... I got that. That's when I had an Android phone, so I had a Samsung, and then it wasn't syncing right, and you couldn't see anything, so you're like, integrate into Apple. So I did, because you told me to. And um, (laughs) so now we're here. I appreciate the data, and, you know, as we talk, we'll go into the pitfalls of certain points and how some of them are very useful, but how, you know, there's some you should ignore. Yeah, so I was a also a... I didn't want one. I didn't really care. I'm also very cheap, so um, that was the main reason. <laughs> so you settled they... for a second generation. That's no, my I mom know. got it for me randomly for Christmas one year, and uh-huh. she's like, this is the old run, but uh, I thought you might like it. And I was really hesitant to like start it like before now I kind of I wasn't allowed to wear any jewelry because I've always worked in factories. You can't have anything on you. Um, so like I couldn't wear it for a while, which sucked, but, um, yeah, I like it for steps for sure. 
Yeah, that's another thing with my job when I was working in an office. Like you could have it in a certain area, but any other like restricted area, you had to take it off. And I'd be like, this is such a pain in the ass. Like I'm just going to wear a regular ass watch so I don't have to fucking pick it off and lock it up all the time. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> good point. Yep, yep. But uh, I, I mean, I guess I could have wore it on my ankle. And I think I did when I was on prep, though, because I was really particular about everything, obviously. Um, and I'm like, they won't know because ours was just like a food hazard. It wasn't like a yeah. electronic Security. thing. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. What about uh, what do you find the most useful? Like personally, I just use it for steps, um, heart rate. Sleep is cool if you're able to find a good charging cycle, but sometimes, especially like now, uh, I've fallen into the bad cycle of charging with the watch. So it has to charge at night or else I just lose all my steps. <laughs> I, I Yeah, I don't ever use it for sleep either because of the same reason. No. Yeah, same. I, I also can't sleep wearing anything. I take my wedding ring off at night because I'm like, anything touching me, like only sleep in my underwear and that's just like, you know, pushing it already so y'all needed to know that um yeah thanks for that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i will <laughs> anyway the uh <laughs> the thing with me is like i i think steps yeah steps are about it because and i know i keep alluding to it but so much of the stuff it attempts to give you it's just not accurate yeah, yeah. It's a good heart rate <laughs> monitor I don't have a heart rate router <laughs> because it's too old. <laughs> it's a phenomenon. <laughs> Kel has a Fitbit with an Apple uh, Watch logo on it. <laughs> I can get my texts. <laughs> I have all of that shit turned off because it irritates me and embarrasses me. <laughs> One time I had friends over and my watch goes like ding ding and my friend goes, uh, mommy is calling you and I was like, Oh my fucking god! My watch just outed me as a mama's boy. I'm gonna take that shit out right now. Get all the notifications up. No, nothing makes any sound that I own because I've silenced everything in 2015 or whatever. But um, yeah, it does. I still get texts, and every once in a while, if I can't, if I don't want to walk to get my phone, I'll answer through text. <laughs> I mean, that's impressive. You can answer a text via your second generation Apple Watch. So I, do, I draw on it too. Like I do, I, you do the handwriting thing. <laughs> you <a> tell time. <laughs> that's all it does. It's a pedometer that tells time. That's all. Yeah. It's, a, it's a sundial. It like, pops out. And you're like, oh, guys, got to go outside. Hold on. No, I well, have that... a second gen too. That, well, that's what you guys were talking about the, the watch faces, and I didn't know that you could even change them. <laughs> <laughs> rocked his world that day <laughs> <laughs> um so if not you know steps are a great thing to you know keep track of that you know fitbits and apple watches i mean i do have to you know give it up to fitbit they have done a lot you know they do the same thing basically that apple watches do now uh so also for much less money um but uh i like I don't know. I was gifted this, so that's where I stand. I love now that I have an Apple Watch. I probably wouldn't go buy a Fitbit just because it's all together. That like all of my things are compatible with each other. You know, I have a MacBook, I have Apple iPhone. So when you have one brand, it just works so nicely. They all sync up together. So I don't see myself going out to buy a Fitbit. But if you have nothing and you are crunched for money, I think a Fitbit is a really solid Absolutely. choice just in case anyone is like, oh, I'm Team Fitbit, or like, fuck you guys. Not everyone can afford an Apple Watch. And like, I get that. So yeah, Fitbits are great too, as far as steps and all that stuff. There are some things that I, there's some features of both the Fitbit and the Apple Watch that I wish we could get rid of, and that would be uh, calories burned, mm -hmm. because everyone pays attention to those, and they think like, oh, I burned 500 calories on this 30 minute walk. So I'm going to go eat those back and I'll be fine. But the problem is it's very inaccurate uh, because, you know, it's individual, even if it's setting it off of your height, weight, gender, and all that stuff, it's still very inaccurate depending on, because a watch cannot tell you uh, how many calories you are 
burning. It can give you an approximate number, but still with the percentage of error that can add up. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm stupidly wrong. It'll say I burned 3,200 calories on a rest day. And I'm like, no, I fucking didn't. No, I (laughs) fucking didn't. Yeah. I don't ever even turn mine on to like the, the workout stuff or anything like that like, ever either yeah oh i do turn an outdoor walk i used to use a lot <laughs> but that was mostly because it'll yell at you if they get things exactly. walking sometimes it's embarrassing though because i remember when we were in vegas they asked if if they if i was on an outdoor run because our ladies all walk very fast <laughs> <laughs> They're like, um, hey, little man, are you running? <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Your little legs are moving so fast. <laughs> That's what I always uh, think of that meme. I got little legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's other times where it will ask if you're working out, and I won't talk about that. But um... <laughs> you're sweating. Yeah, like, well, sh- Kind of. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, so I would say if you're someone who's paying attention to those calories burned, don't, don't. do it. Just stop. <laughs> it's not accurate. It's going to just sabotage your efforts. <laughs> yeah. Though I do like the um, the rings close thing that makes it kind of a competition for people. Um I don't think that use that doesn't tell you anything about calories, but it does like remind people to move. Um, so I do like that feature. Like, not that it's something that's groundbreaking, but I just love anything that encourages people to like move and gamifying. It does sometimes help. I do think yeah. that the move metric is calories, but closing the ring is cool. I I agree. Closing rings feels nice, though. I've noticed recently in the last couple of weeks that it no longer thinks I exercise at all. Like, it's like you did 10 minutes and I'm like, I know that I was sweating my ass off and heavy breathing for the last hour and a half. So, uh, I never, maybe, clo- I never close my like- rings, <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. It, it has that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I did do it. <laughs> My thing is it encourages people to move, and I appreciate yeah. that. It's the same reason I liked Pokemon Go. So, or, Is that what it was called? Yeah. Me. That's, <laughs> That's another good one. Yeah, or it tells you to stand up. Like if you've been oh, yeah. sitting for a while, it'll be like, stand up. And sometimes it's weird because I will just have stood up, and then I'll sit down, and it tells me to stand up. I was like, yo, I, I just, what are you doing? <laughs> Am I too short? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> It's like, no, you did not stand up. You have to like raise your arms over your head every time you get up if you're short. Um, yeah. yeah. Not tall enough to ride that ride. Eh. <laughs> you know, something that really <laughs> devastated me was uh, I tried to put the watch on my ankle when I was riding a bike to be like, this should count as steps, motherfucker. And it was like, no, this is not steps. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I could th- it's like I can't I can't feel mm-mm, you're not that low to the ground walking bitch <laughs> Man. They're like this is too smooth for your uh, heavy ass mm. steps <laughs> <laughs> I do be clomp clomping on a treadmill like if I took my head- headphones off I'm like damn who the- <laughs> like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you sound like you would be a heavy the horse <laughs> is that a fat joke I swear to god <laughs> <laughs> You can hear him coming before you. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, There's just some people like the other day at the gym, you could hear the steps like across the gym, like echo, just like someone was just clomping. stomping. And I was I, just like, do your feet hurt? Like, what is that? <laughs> Maybe. Hey, like, mm, sometimes know. people are clompy. I'm clompy because my foot is kind of broken. <laughs> 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 So I am well, also a loud stepper. <laughs> you get shin splints. No, it's from it's. I can't. I don't have full control of my. Oh yeah, no, left it's leg back issue. It's thing. my back right. issue. Yeah, yeah it, I was wondering I, if it caused shin splints from walking like that, like over time, if it adds. To uh, it. Probably. I know That's if funny. I get going really fast when I'm walking, it hurts. <laughs> Kel, yeah. But, so, um, but yeah, I don't. I can't uh, unless I'm really paying attention. I 
it, it's very loud and I sound kind of like Igor. So I, I get very um, embarrassed about it sometimes because <laughs> it's like one foot is like normal and the other one's like, <laughs> it's very, <laughs> I've never noticed, but I, I usually, when I'm around people, I try real hard. So it's only if like our ladies are speed walking, then I'm like, <laughs> this is a normal <laughs> foot. <laughs> <laughs> How about so other wearables? We have the the <laughs> whoop. <laughs> you it's played so with cool. the you had the whoop cool whip for a while, right? Yeah, I did have the whoop for a bit. I uh, I didn't like it uh, because <laughs> I already wore like it doesn't count your steps. Uh, so you'd have to wear two things. Uh, and I'm I wearing anything on my left. I don't because I got the nerve thing. It just it's not good. So um, I tried it out for a good like month or so. Then I switched back to just my Apple Watch because there's apps that can do the same thing that the Whoop uh, can. Thing is, it doesn't die quite like it lasts days before it dies. Mm -hmm. So that's nice, but. It only, you know, records your HRV and then uh, that's about, about, and your sleep and that's about it. So you're paying like $30 a month just for your sleep uh, and like recovery information. So it's kind of a lot for just that when your Apple Watch can do the same thing. If you find the right app, you might have to pay for the app, but it's maybe a few bucks a month versus 30. Uh, so that's my biggest beef with the Whoop, but also I just don't think that it's a great tool for bodybuilding specifically. I think it's better for more endurance athletes uh, just because, you know, HRV, I think it's just one of those things that doesn't give as much of a clue into bodybuilding recovery as it would for someone who's, you know, running a lot of X miles per week and stuff like that. Is HRV heart rate variable? Yeah, so I brained that. I was like, "What the fuck is HRV?" <laughs> Heart rate variation. Yeah, so, variation. I was close. Yeah, it can, uh, you know, show you, you know, if if you've recovered enough and stuff like it gives you like a score. Um, so the one thing I did like is that it made me more conscious of getting more sleep and rest and stuff like that. But it was also kind of frustrating for me because I would like sleep or. Think I would feel pretty damn good, and then I look at my whoop stuff, and it would say I would, like needed to rest. I was like in the red, and so I, that's when I was just like, it doesn't align with how I feel. So then I would just end up getting in my head and being like, well, this thing's telling me that I should rest, so I'm gonna obviously feel like shit today. So I'm just gonna yeah. pretend I feel like shit. So it's just uh, not, I don't think great for for bodybuilding specifically. <laughs> Can you imagine working in an office and having something like that telling you like all day that you're tired? <laughs> like I'd be like, "What the fuck do you want me to do about it?" Whoop! <laughs> I go in the bathroom. I take a nap. <laughs> it's like sleep. Damn. That's what. Yeah. Did you have? Has anybody had the Oracle? I've always been curious about it. The Ring one. I thought about it because I was like, "Oh, I won't have to wear another watch," but I haven't tried it. Yeah, because I think it is like this similar it, to the Whoop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but you only have to wear a ring. It's so fancy. Yeah, so just make sure you don't get it stuck on your fat hands like me. Uh, but <laughs> at least you don't have to wear a watch. But also lifting that could get annoying. Uh, so like, once again, you can't like, climb with that either. Oh, no, imagine. so it's like for it's really these things are kind of geared towards endurance athletes where you're not using your hands. Uh, you're just running, cycling. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it was a good what thought. Us? No one cares about us. <laughs> I know like sleep numbers do the same kind of thing. If you have one of those fancy mattresses, <clears throat> my training I partner thought... has one of those. I thought it was just so you could adjust the firmness of your mattress, not to like. You can, but it also straight. tells you how good you did. Oh. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't need my bed judging me. Like <laughs> how well I slept, I'd be like. That's the one bad. time I am not being judged. But no, just kidding. Data point for everything, right? It's like fun until it's not, and then you get over. <laughs> at least for me, at some point, it's too much information and too much variance. You're like, ah. The point is, 
sleep when you're sleepy to me anyway, or try to get a tight eight or whatever, if that's what works for you. Um, sometimes I think people tend to overcomplicate things and I'm surprised Cody's not already laughing at me for saying that because I, <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have all the wearables, like on all your limbs, your ankles, your fingers. And then you're like, Oh, but this, this one, one says, says... <laughs> <laughs> this one says I burned 5,300 calories, but this one says 32. <laughs> I'm bulking. What can I do? <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, so, yeah, there's also something that uh, doesn't get talked about as much, but I feel like it's it's been up and coming and then down like up it, con continuous glucose monitors because it's like an actual f medical thing that people use. It's not just this fitness wearable, but I have experimented with them and they can be controversial. Uh, because people are like, that's so stupid. Of course, your blood sugar is going to go up after you eat something, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I get that. But it is kind of a, it's a motivator. Uh, it's a cool little insight because, you know, if you do eat junk food, there is a, an instantaneous little like piece of data for you to be able to look at. <laughs> and when you see your blood sugar, like go way up, you're just like, Shit. Okay. I see Can't that. Can't you feel it happen, though? Uh, I like, mean... I know if I've eaten shit. Like, my body's like... <laughs> yeah, but you get to, like, get an inside look at your body, you know? Uh, yeah. um, but also, it just, it's cool to see how your body also responds to things like exercise. You know, your, your, your glucose goes up as you exercise due to the stress and how it comes back down. So it's just kind of a cool way to, like, get a read on your body. But that being said, it can also become obsessive. So it's just all these little things that can always be useful, but there's a line. It's kind of like the scale, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so those things, I know people are like, they're like, don't don't do it. You never have to do it. It's fine. You could live your whole life and never use a continuous glucose monitor. It's just if you want to see where like how food impacts your blood sugars, cool, have fun, do it. But um, it's not it's not necessary. <laughs> Yeah, I've never used one of those before, but I, I don't feel it unless I'm doing something really dumb, like <laughs> eating a lot of really bad things right in a row. <laughs> like I, I would have hated to see my after, because I did not um, rebound well after my bodybuilding show. Um, I rebounded like a dick. <laughs> and I ate like three of the fat and weird cookies like the next day with like <laughs> ice cream. And I was not smart about it. So I really felt bad, but that would have been interesting. I felt bad then, but I don't normally feel bad um, when I'm yeah, stupid. Yeah. That's something I've noticed um, prior to uh, getting into shape. Uh I, when I ate like shit all the time, I didn't notice, right? But now if I have like a treat meal that was a little more than a treat, you know, I feel like absolute fucking garbage. No, yeah. it's crazy how that happens, right? You're just, when your normal is feeling like shit, you don't notice it. Yeah. And you start feeling good and you're like, oh, now I know when I feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. Like the things I used to eat for lunch and then go back to work. I'm like, how the fuck did I function at all after consuming that? You had KFC for lunch and then went back to work? Judging. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what you don't know, though. I mean, it's yeah. true. So if you're not eating healthy, don't ever eat healthy and you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what we're trying to say, okay? <laughs> oh, Blissful God. ignorance, folks. Yep, that's the secret to happiness. I mean, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, but so. uh, there, the other wearable technology, and so my mom is an Orange Theory girly, uh, yeah. which is weird. Um, but they, I'm sure you all have seen the wearables that they use before. Yeah, they're just they a heart, the rate. heart rate. They're yeah. heart rate monitors essentially. Um, and they correlate it to splat points. So my mom always likes to tell me how many splat points she got for the class or whatever. <laughs> so it's like 
the whole concept of Orange Theory is to like maintain your heart rate in this like what I forget fat which zone. zone in the fat burning zone, but they have a color that's associated with it. So every I think it's every minute that you're in that fat burning zone, you get a point. Um, and so like the whole class is to try to stay into that that is zone. The color orange, probably. It is. <laughs> I'm looking at it, but um. <laughs> Just to guess, but. I I know that is always really strange too, and and I understand what they're going for, but I would love to hear how accurate those things are. Yeah, or just the necessity of it. Instead of like, I feel like it's kind of like CrossFit, where it's like, how can we kill you today? And instead yes. of focusing on how can we make progress today, how can we get better today, it's just like. Let's keep your heart rate up. Let's keep you sweating and keep you coming back because we, we want to make it feel like you did something. <laughs> yep. And your name gets put on the board and it gets, yeah. it's very gamify, gamified. 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 <laughs> My mom would definitely not be there if it was gamified. <laughs> but, but I would be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they pass out Bud Lights. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. See, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure how. Uh, like, I get it. You know, it's uh, keeping people's intensity up. So, in that sense, I'd say, cool. That definitely would help. It's an external motivator. Being like, if you can see your heart rate and it's not up there where it should be, then you need to work harder. So, I can mm -hmm. see how that could be beneficial. Uh, but that's where it kind of stops. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I think that those are all the wearables I know of. I, I had a friend who wore a, a similar one, but it was like a, essentially a heart rate monitor. So he'd wear it under a shirt. Um, oh yeah, I seems those. like way too much work for me. But <laughs> yeah, especially when your watch can do it now. So your watch can do it. Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, <laughs> it's it's allegedly yeah. more accurate. The one that goes around, like I don't remember if it's Garmin or something, but I have one. I I used it during prep during cardio because I was like, you are going to do what you're supposed to do, bitch. So <laughs> obviously, I stopped using that now because I'm like, I'm getting a little sweaty and I'm breathing hard. That's good enough for me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it kind of sounds like there's a difference between a wearable or a function that is motivating for someone who's starting out and then a wearable or a function of a wearable that helps athletes and right. is reliable in the data point. Because if something like encourages you and it doesn't like inadvertently encourage you to overeat or to under or over exercise, it sounds like it's a, a net positive for someone who's just starting. But maybe once you've kind of settled into a routine and you start to rely on trends, maybe it's not so accurate at that point. You need to switch to something else. Right. That just yeah. reminds me of uh, also the other thing that pisses me off. And I know it's not like a wearable or anything, but in my fitness pal, how it has the equation at the top. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. Subtract your total calories subtract out how much you've exercised and that's your that. calories that you have hey, left to eat <sighs> i swear I don't, they just why do they people. do that because they want to keep turn people it overweight and then yes. you can but you can't turn it off unless you have premium now so yeah yeah it's pretty pretty dumb so uh yeah they i think just want to keep people overweight and using their app or something <laughs> so right. ridiculous I, it's always everybody's first question well why am i under eating so much I'm like, you're not i promise no. you or i do get people who ask should i eat back the calories um i appreciate the people who ask me instead of just doing it <laughs> so i'm like oh too. thank you for asking because if you don't want to do that uh but yeah i wish i could just by default have that turned off but they by default have that turned on and it doesn't make any sense no really so i'm gonna write the company a very <laughs> very uh angry strongly email. word a strongly worded email yeah yeah It'll speaking of <laughs> i i saw a recent uh i don't want to say hack because it's not really a hack but uh someone figured out that if you change your location in my fitness pal to like the uk it'll go back the way it was with scanning and stuff? 
Yeah, because I know because isn't scanning not premium anymore. It's only premium. Uh, that's yeah. Can, sorry, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah, like it goes back to the original free version if you change your uh, to out of the states, which I was like. But does it have it. does it have weird foods then, or does yeah, it have all of? Would you look only at <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you can you can change it in the American one too. Like either one, I'd imagine it has like all the conversions. But I could be wrong. I haven't tested it myself because I have a meal plan, so I don't need my fitness pal. But um, I mean, I've heard of other. Have you guys looked at the other trackers that are? I can't remember the name of. It is a few. There's a yeah. few, and and they they have like some positives, some negatives. Um, but like. My fitness pal has the biggest library, and they know it. Yeah, yeah they do exactly. It's the easiest to use because you can type in just like the letter of the first thing that you're entering, and it'll all these things pop up, and it's just so easy to find what you're looking for. Um, other things you have to type out like the whole thing at least one time, just so it starts to learn, you know, yeah. what you're eating, and it's pretty frustrating because I've tried to. A few different ones to see and my fitness pal i always just come back to it and i'm like fine i will pay fucking twenty dollars just so i can scan shit or change shit uh 20 a month it's i think it's 20 now yeah a month a not a year no that's insane yeah, i know i like lose it lose it's the only other one that i've like liked um for that yeah. I think there's that, like that was all I said. <laughs> That's all I have to lose say it. about that. Lose it. <laughs> I like lose it. I haven't tried it. That's about. Um, I think there's like Carbon Diet Coach. Uh, then there's a Macro Factor or uh, yeah, I can't remember any of the other ones. But pen and paper. That's way too. Is much that like? That sounds like something Cal would do, but he doesn't. So. <laughs> I mean, you could. You got the label right there. <laughs> you know, you're you could. <laughs> you know, I love some paper. I do love some paper. I, I write down all of my workouts. So, yeah. So I he, like he draws the line at workouts, and then the rest is got to be an app. Food, you'd have to do math, and that's exactly. That's I'm not doing math. Back in my day, that's what I used Arithmetic. to do. <laughs> the, I have. Um, the, it's been super nice. The guy, uh, I, I'm i coaching powerlifting, and one kid who is uh, playing or uh, participating, is his thing is math. So I'm like, all right, Dylan, how much do I got on the bar? And he does it for me. It's so nice. I wish I could bring Dylan everywhere. <laughs> That's I wish you could just I'll... take a picture, and then it'll calculate it for you. That'd be fun. Yes. Because that really, dude, I'll, I feel like if anyone looked at me while I'm loading weight, like me doing the math, I'm like, the worst is if someone tries to talk to you and you're like, shut up, I'm doing math. Mm -hmm. I need it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> or the random bars that are like 22 pounds or whatever, like the, the preacher curl. I was like, wait, is this a 22 one? Or if you accidentally grab the wrong kind of barbell, like, you know how I didn't realize until I started working out a powerlifting gym that there's all different weights of barbells. Like I was like, oh, the purple one is less. The white one is the most. Why? <laughs> yeah, there's uh, like there's a bunch of different easy bars, like and like shorter bars that a lot of times aren't even marked. T bars aren't marked. It's very annoying. Yeah. So then you end up just I just count it as zero if I don't know, and then I just go by whatever way they put Same. on it. Track trend. We're smart. Yeah. We <laughs> figured it out. Sometimes I don't even try with the easy bar stuff. I just remember what I put on the easy bar and I'll calculate it that way because I don't fucking know what the bar weighs. So, yeah. So, moving on to the next <laughs> oh, no. anyway. technology. Uh, since we're talking about weight, we can talk about scales. So, nowadays, mm. scales don't just give you a number. Uh, they don't just measure the gravity, the gravitational pull on your body. They also measure, supposedly, your bone density and your fat mass and uh, what else do they measure? That's about it. So, will to live. <laughs> if your will to live 
is low, you're probably not stepping on the scale to begin with. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I kind of wish that we would just go back old school and go to the scales that just measured uh, your weight uh, because everything else, so specifically uh, people all the time get, they, they basically have a breakdown because they'll be like the scale, although it is moving in the right direction, it says that my body composition is getting worse and like my fat mass is going up. And then I have to explain to them, it's okay, calm down. It's not accurate. It depends on your hydration levels. So that is why it's a pretty big downfall when it comes to the bioelectrical impedance calculations. Uh, depends how hydrated you are. If you are more or less hydrated than you were the day previous, it could have a different reading. And that has nothing to do with your current body fat level. So that's why I'm like, just chuck that option out the window. Uh, so we don't confuse ourselves or make ourselves mad. <laughs> Dude, mine, when I was in prep, I just clicked that button for shits and giggles. You know what percentage it told me I was at a week out? 5%. 40. 40%. Forty. And I was like, okay, like, I know that I'm not, like, stagely, but I'm not no 40%. You are not 40%. Percent. No. No. Uh -huh. And I was, and that was when I was like, okay, well, well we're never looking at that again, because that's, like, bollocks. Like, there's no fucking <laughs> way. So, yeah, ignore it. Yeah, my scale does not have that kind of fanciness. <laughs> what? As I would expect from you, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> I bring in the weights! <laughs> but that's for the best, because it really just uh, confuses people. And uh, I think that there's some cool little features now where scales will link up to your phone app, so it just kind of puts your weight into there for you. But outside of that, we could just do away with everything else. I, It's useless. Yeah. yeah also remember bad. to calibrate your scales because I pick mine up and put mine away. I didn't realize that every time I was doing that, I was throwing it off. And uh, it was 10 pounds off. And that was devastating. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm... I'm feeling bigger, but the scale's the same. That's so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yo, you're actually welcome. <laughs> yeah. That, so I, working in a food f facility, like, so we had scales, but they're like government scales, right? So they're <laughs> incredibly accurate and they, have, they come with certificates. We have to mail them places. It is very accurate. So I'm like, this bathroom scale means nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and, and so uh, like, and I think the other thing that people always get thrown off of is when you switch scales, like they'll go yeah. like, well, I weighed myself here and I weighed myself here and I weighed myself here and I have seven different numbers. What the hell is happening? And I'm like, you have to, you have to be consistent and you can't yeah. go back and forth. You can't do it at different times of the day. All this stuff matters. And I know we've talked about this a gazillion times, but like. Um, just be aware that these scales are not scientific instruments if you bought them at Target. Um, so weirdly, same with hospital scales, like the old school ones. I found those to be dramatically off. I even had my doctor tell me, like, just ignore that. We're just just go by what you saw this morning, because mine, like a few months ago, said I was 195 and granted I was wearing clothes but I'm like I'm not 195 like that's <laughs> no and the doctor's like yeah no just ignore it I'm like then why you weigh should me probably in? get a new scale <laughs> well, yeah why weigh me and also like why am I wearing an overcoat like <laughs> anyway but they don't really care well yeah it's just like if they're gonna put you let's say you're going through a procedure you need anesthesia and the scale says you weigh 195 goodbye <laughs> We will not be seeing you I, again. <laughs> I have a funny story about that. Um, my <laughs> gastro forgot to, because I told him I was like, I'm actively losing weight. When I first saw him, I was 220. And then when I actually had the procedure, I was 195. And like, I don't, I don't know. Later, I, he was, I was like, hey, just curious. What did you base like my anesthesia on like weight wise? Because on the, the chart, it said 217. And I'm like, there's like. What's the math on that? Almost a 30 pound difference. That's what he based yeah. off of? The, yeah, the original weight. Well, you woke up, so that's what matters. I sure did, buddy. 
<laughs> I'm here. <laughs> they scoped me anything, out. <laughs> you just got a little extra snooze time, and that's all. It did, so. it did seem harder to wake up than other times I've had it, so you kind of wonder. Yeah. Well, mm. I think anyway. like good little propofol nap. Propofol, you know they hope I fall, because when in it, sorry. <laughs> you guys too old? Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I have like no idea what you're talking you. about. Nicki Minaj. Mickey oh. Minaj. Wow. She is not on my regular listening playlist, unfortunately. She's not on mine either. <laughs> but... if, it's not, if it's not Haley Williams, Cody doesn't know. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it either has to be Haley Williams or sounds like Haley Williams. So I can, like, <laughs> you know, not be, when I need some new shit, and I'll be like, kind of sounds like Haley. So it'll get me over until like, they come up with a new album or some shit. He likes what he likes. This is true. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so what are, should we talk about some things that we can accurately measure body fat? Yeah, let's do it. So that kind of technology. So, Sorry. Yeah. You... <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. So <laughs> Moving I... on now that Seth is rude. I'm just kidding. All right. I know, I like it. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, Dexa scans are awesome. I really like them. I've had uh, a couple done. I haven't done one in all since prep uh, a week before my show, so it's been a long, long time. Love that to would see be those interesting numbers. to see. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. And now um, that I'm in, like <laughs> Cody called me peak bulk the other day. <laughs> that's some fucking mean shit. <laughs> Well, to be fair, it's he was the one honest. saying he was fat, so I was like, "Don't weird up, fat." Peak bulk. Yeah, he says <laughs> stuff like that to me too. He's like, "You're not fat, but whatever you're doing, stop it." <laughs> you're not fat yet. You're getting fat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like you, you, you're in that direction, <laughs> Mr. Chonky. There's a difference between being fat and gaining fat. You're doing the gaining fat thing, so you're, you're headed in the wrong direction. Let's reverse. I'm hibernating. <laughs> it's, it's springtime, bitch. Get out of your cave. Uh, yeah. So, yes, DEXA scans are the most accurate way to measure your body fat. Unlike the scales, there's also... So, if you do it correctly, calipers are, you know, accurate-ish, but... The whole done correctly thing, emphasis on that, because it's hard to be consistent with that. If you're grabbing in different places each time, that could make it inaccurate. Uh, so there's a lot of user error possibility with the skin fold stuff. Uh, there's also, you know, besides the scale thing, there's those bioelectrical impedance things where you hold out like this. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Really depends on your hydration levels. So... I, there are some gyms out there that literally sell memberships off of these types of body fat stuff. And it drives me mm -hmm. insane because I'm just like, this is how they get people in the door. They make them hold these things or stand on these scales to tell them that like they're over fat. It's like, <laughs> it's the like way really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. So I think that's um, where it started. What other way? Oh, yeah, you could do. I mean, body measurements, there's a way to calculate, you know, body fat percentage off of those, but like a, user error, it, it, math is hard, but also uh, depending where you're measuring, are you measuring different places? Are, how did you do it yourself or did you have someone help you or, you know, a lot of things left up to question where is DEXA scans very consistent and it's not a lot of user error uh, can happen there. So. Nope. You just lay there. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I have a better solution. Everyone listening, you just hire one of these guys, and they will just tell you if you're fat or not, <laughs> just on site. <laughs> Best money I ever spent was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, am I, I'm not wrong. Is the look is is you know if someone who knows what they're looking at and what they're looking for can generally tell you if you're carrying a little too much extra. Do you really need to know if you're thirty percent or thirty three percent? Like, yeah, I, I the way I've used the dexes before is to notice things when we're changing. So like, I did one at the end of my bulk, and then uh, I think a week before stage, 
um, because I wanted to see how much it changed. And so yeah. like I that's what I like because in the DEXA scans, you usually get a printout in it of all your runs that you've done. So it has all the numbers total or like uh, compared uh, yeah. it makes it really, really handy. And that makes sense to me for you because you're an athlete. Whereas mm-hmm. like I feel like the average person that might, it de- depending on how they view body fat in general and like are they going to just, is it going to create a spiral if it's higher than they thought? Are they going to obsess over that number even if they're doing what they're supposed to do? Like it's a data point just like anything else. But I I always feel like, you know, it, it's funny. I'm sure it's hilarious for Cody to hear me saying this shit. But like start with the basics, you know, like <laughs> don't obsess over the minutia at first. You know, like <laughs> do what you're supposed to do for a while. And then if you're trying to actually track things for a, a competition or like changes. Yeah. But I mean... Yeah. Basically, yeah. it's like the majority of people, you never, ever actually have to measure your body fat. It doesn't matter. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just, there's a lot of things I think they're created for people who like more data points, but also athletes to optimize their performance. Mm-hmm. But it kind of, I think maybe they existed previously for athletes to optimize performance. But then the marketing people were like, hey, we could sell this shit to other people who don't know any better. And that's where that's it all cool. starts. And uh, then we just, you know, start confusing people even more. And then we have to have conversations like this. So um, I would say the DEXA scan is very useful. Uh, It could be useful for even people who are just curious, uh, because at least it's more accurate. Uh, I wouldn't go buy a scale for curiosity. I would get a DEXA scan for curiosity, though. Uh, So, yeah, there's also like underwater wing and uh, the the bod pod, or it's like Mm -hmm. air display placement or some yeah shit. the bod like pod that. i forgot about that yeah yeah so there's different ways but dex is definitely the uh number one up there mm-hmm. for accuracy so absolutely yeah i i love a data point but you know speaking more as a layman than you guys um just trying to channel that shut the fuck up and do what you're told and <laughs> Don't worry about the stuff unless someone well, tells you to. My thoughts on it, on a lot of it is like, what does that number mean? So most people aren't chasing a number at all. They're chasing a look. Um, so really the numbers have nothing to do with your concern. Like it is a concern of mine to see the trends. Um, but most people will say they want to lose 20 pounds. And I'm like, well, if you went up 20 pounds, but you look like you lost 20 pounds would you be happy? Um, and the answer to most people is, is yes, unless they have some kind of ish, issue where they're trying to make like a surgery BMI or something like that. Um, so it, it's kind of always with these kinds of things, I've said it before, I'll say it again, uh, know what they're trying, like what is the marketing trying to get you to do? Are they trying to get you to buy something? Are they trying to get you to spiral? Who knows? Like, it, it, are they going to sell more if you're if you get a certain number versus a different number? Like, it, these are things you need to think about intention, right? Um, and and understand why you want it. Why do you care? Um, yeah, I don't think people yeah. think. I think we're full because we're advertised to to at basically every point in our waking eyes. Um, people. Um, forget that they're being sold something at all times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a bit of a tangent, but you reminded me of something funny. One time I was at Six Flags and I, we were walking around and I look at Sharice and I was like, you know what sounds really good right now? It's like a Coke, like a Mexican Coke, like a real Coke. And she just looks at me like just blank stares and she points behind me. And I've just been standing for like 15 minutes next to the fucking biggest advertisement for Coke you've ever seen she's like i think advertising works very well on you <laughs> <laughs> like you know i just have this it's, it's just popped into my head i just want some coke specifically mexican coke that i never fucking drink <laughs> and it's like anyway that's a it's hilarious i do have a question for you guys speaking as someone who is a client to two coaches does it frustrate you when you have clients come to you with all this data that they may have come by 
either legitimately or not and been concerned about it when you really just want them to concentrate on uh, the big picture. Because personally, as a client, I find when I focus too much on the details, it paralyzes me. Yeah. I mean, I would say like in the beginning, it's a pretty legitimate question because people just don't know. So in the beginning, you know, but if they can like keep being concerned with data that I've said, don't pay attention to yes <laughs> then i'm like what are we talking we having this conversation again like did i not say stop looking at that <laughs> so yeah <laughs> for me everything goes back to intention what is the intent like are they really concerned with like not, uh, do they just not know or is it more something like they're trying to help they're trying to get more information i don't know it kind of depends but yeah 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 i like that take those fucking scales though man if i get like it, there's been many a times where the the whole body fat percentage thing keeps coming up i'm just like i would like to throw all of those scales into the ocean uh because like <laughs> <laughs> it because it, it's never it's never a it's never a good email. It's never this calm, positive email when I get from people. It's this panicked email about their body fat percentage going up when they've been losing weight or feeling better. And they're like, but the scale says this. And it's this it's this thing. Like, they are not happy. Legitimately not happy. They're legitimately concerned. And then I have to talk them down. <laughs> and so it's just like, that's why I wish I could get rid of that feature. Because if I, I just have to keep talking people off of ledges unnecessarily <laughs> makes sense makes sense are we missing anything is there any other Not that i can think of hmm. mm. oh as an aside it's a metric have either of you ever encountered an issue with step up where it'll say you've hit x amount of steps but then you check 30 minutes later and it's dropped you by 2,000 steps mm -mm. no <laughs> no. I, the only issue I've had is when it logged me out and I couldn't get back in. Yeah, mm. same. Ruined but... streak. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> oh, but what we should talk about is our new technology that we're using at the lab. Cody, would you like to talk about it? Oh, uh, yes. We did not talk about like fitness apps and shit. So, <laughs> um, oh yeah. <laughs> so over at the lab, uh, we do enjoy a good technology when it comes to tracking your workouts. So we are using Train Heroic now to deliver our workouts in just a more organized fashion, but it also helps you progress because it keeps track of your weights, and we can put our video library right into. Uh, the workouts that we create. So there's videos, there's instruction, there's stuff. So you never have to really guess uh, if you're doing something right. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a real much easier way than printing some PDFs or bringing PDFs to you at the gym and tracking separately. You can do it all in one place. So another reason to come join the lab. <laughs> and we have this, and we also utilize the Step Up app, which uh, Seth kind of mentioned. Uh, it allows us to track our st steps and, uh, against each other, essentially. And it has a leaderboard every week. Um, and Ash is always beating everybody by a lot. <laughs> Man walks everywhere, so I don't think he stops walking. No, I think he's a hamster wheel, and I want. <laughs> I want the hamster wheel. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have challenges every month in the lab that we throw, and uh, generally we kind of just always keep that step that step goal going for people. But it's fun to have a little friendly competition. Um, the more people we have for train heroic as well, I, how it works is. You, depending on what split you choose, it kind of puts you on a team and you can talk amongst yourselves. Uh, but uh, if there's no one else doing that work, <laughs> you're just talking to yourself. So They're cursing join us. the lab. Yeah. <laughs> if you want friends, join the lab so other people in the lab can have more friends too. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's all I had. Um, do you guys Same. have anything else? 
Not that I can think of. How about you, Seth? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, calibrate your scale. You know. What? Calibrate your scale. Oh. If you've never yeah. done that, and then just brace yourself just in case you've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Brace yourself if you've never weighed yourself before. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. That's everyone's like, bleh, bleh. <laughs> bleh. So, should we go to the uh, power talk? Let's hear it. All right. So here is my life-changing power talk uh, for you. It's, it's going to be the power talk of the year, okay? So, <laughs> this is by Dale Carnegie. And Ooh. says, if you want to conquer fear, don't sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy. Get busy, guys. Get so busy. if you're afraid Shh, of something, Paul. <laughs> essentially, you're not going to get less afraid of something by avoiding it. Kind of how anxiety works, which sucks because my whole life is anxiety and I just can't avoid living, unfortunately, although I would like to sometimes. But uh Anxiety gets worse the more you avoid it. It's the worst. So you got to just like lean into it, right? If you're afraid of something, you got to lean into it. You're afraid to go to the gym. You're not going to get less afraid if you don't go. You're afraid of uh, afraid of the scale. You're not going to get less afraid of it if you don't step on it. So it's the unfortunate facts of life that if you want to get over a fear, you actually have to do the thing. You can't just think about the thing. You can't talk about the thing. You got to fucking do the thing. So action speaks louder than words and it also helps you get less scared so there you go i hope y'all are entering into the week less scared for that uh, power talk and if you're afraid of mondays unfortunately and fortunately you're gonna have to face it no matter what so some things life just push forces you into some things you got to force yourself into <laughs> yeah just have some lasagna what <laughs> Garfield. Garfield? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> I, I either like overshoot or undershoot like your age. <laughs> it was all oh. the, the move. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be removed from this podcast if you just keep bringing our age up. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, goodbye. <laughs> 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 all right fellas until right, next time peace bye